having the meeting and two for inviting me uh, uh, to speak at this very important meeting. Um, something that I, it's really, really critically important uh, that I clarify for the panel is that uh, I'm not a lobbyist of any particular kind. I'm actually a, a, a manage and direct uh, international groups where we do very specialized uh, troubleshooting. My background is I am a Canadian, a, a British Columbia and Canadian uh, interprovincial journeyman electrician. I'm also a building construction engineering technologist, which is every aspect of construction from contracts to completion. And I'm an adjunct faculty member for two medical education groups where I lecture medical education uh, uh, and, and, and approved for ongoing medical education credits in North America now. Now, I, you know, I, and I don't specifically want to get into all the credential part of this, but because of my 33-year background in our academia is blind to temperature, we shoot for engineers, government, governments use our work for their standards. Department of Fisheries and Oceans has used our work for standards. We have been to consult after 9-11 on national security issues that just couldn't be seen. And my whole point to the panel is I'm not a lobbyist of any particular kind. We didn't get into this discussion uh, uh, to pick sides. Now, Safety Code 6 uh, is a very important document because you're talking about uh, potential frequency interactions with people. The danger of Safety Code 6 is this, where we don't have electrical codes that say uh, we have people being electrocuted and fires going on, but you guys are going to keep going on as electrical professionals. We don't have codes saying they're missing critical data. The same applies for building codes. We don't have a building code that says things are falling down, but you guys keep building. Safety Code 6 is the only code in the world that I've ever seen that says we are missing causality as to linking these frequencies to adverse health effects. We're missing biological plausibility. So the idea to move forward with a code that says it's missing critical science is really troubling and concerning. So September of 2010, I represented and presented to Health Canada showing the mechanisms that were missing in Safety Code 6. Now, the power of 6 is this. Unintentional stimulation of tissue is to be avoided, as is the heat effect. It's simple with the code that's specific to protect the public. It actually says that experimental studies show that it can lead to nerve and muscle depolarization, which is an EMF trigger. The trick is, is how are the frequencies hitting you? This is where I want you to take a look at the screen right there. And there's an example of the specific absorption rate that was adopted by Health Canada, by the ATC, and by everybody else. Manufacturers of cell phones have to use that test for their cell phones. And you can see that there's a bracket holding the cell phone next to the head. And you can see the mannequin little head there has got a temperature probe in the top where they put in a fluid to simulate uh, uh, brain tissue. Now, uh, when we contacted Health Canada and we referred to uh, the Canadian government on this, asked them how many, uh, when you guys talk about uh, uh, smart meters or Wi-Fi, I said, what did you do? And they said, well, Wi-Fi, the computer isn't held against the head like a cell phone, and it's the same thing with a smart meter. The smart meter isn't held against the head like a cell phone, so Health Canada determined 24-7 exposure was acceptable. Now, when we asked uh, Eric LeMay, again, we said, uh, how many cell phone antennas were talking to this phone when you did the test? He said, none. When we asked him, what did you do with the bioelectrical information and consideration of humans? He said, they're not electrical. And here with the panel, with the greatest respect to you guys, even when I'm watching this, whole, this discussion place, imagine this. We just attended the Fortis uh, BC application uh, for their wireless smart meters because that was the only avenue given to us as professionals to find out what the heck was going on with these frequencies and to find out that governments were entrusted to and, and therefore bypassed all regulatory process like in BC. They did not go through the BC Utilities Commission. They did not go through anything. The utility, the utility was trusted as experts. And while the utility has a right to change meters, they do not have the right or the jurisdiction to blanket coverage areas and effectively put everybody and everything in the circuit. Now, the information that I'm going to be sending to you is also the transcripts with the BC uh, uh, Forest application where I come in their expert panel. 
Now, when uh, uh, their expert panel and Mr. Warren took exception to me saying that they were going to irradiate 17,000 square kilometers to communicate with these meters, but in his next statement, he said, I said, are the frequencies going to cover 17,000 square kilometers to communicate with the meter? And he said, yes. You guys, as, as professionals, know this. Everything within 17,000 17, square kilometers is electrical at that atomic and molecular level. So you are going to impact all of these things uh, electrically speaking. Now here is that in part, the specific rate, if you see that test you've done here, the specific absorption rate is not even applicable science. And to watch these two sides argue biological effects when the specific absorption rate does not include any biological information in their reporting, when you're mixing frequencies, when you're mixing electrical information, you have to include everything. So now Fortis's engineer also, uh, also uh, told us this, the frequencies have penetrated the ground up to a meter. Now uh, BC uh, and Fortis took exception to us talking about this affecting buildings, but here's the reality of what's going on with these frequencies. When you do a blanket coverage of cities, you, their buildings aren't MRI chambers and they're not designed for those frequencies, so the frequencies will go through walls and they will cause a high-speed vibe twice the frequencies, which is going to shake the foundation over 1.8 billion times per second. Now, this is an, and here's the important part with this causation. Causation, when you're talking frequencies, is an electrical interaction. So when I'm dealing with physicists, when I'm dealing with PhDs, when I'm dealing with very bright eyes, they need to understand this. You have to be electrically qualified to talk about mechanisms, which is causation. And here's what's important for the panel as well. Under cross-examination, to watch Fortis's experts, how they even got qualified as experts with a code that's in causation is beyond me. But for this group, Dr. William Bailey, when I cross-examined Dr. William Bailey and I said, where is your bioelectrical information in your reporting on safety? And he said, it's not there. I said, where is the bioelectrical information in safety code six? And he said, it's not there. So gentlemen, and here's the most important part. The I, I say this because we're telling you that it's not insurable. When we work for insurers and industry at the same time, the specific absorption rate is an admission of guilt. It says we're inducing currents into people. But we didn't give people any biological or electrical information. We just considered water molecules heating. And so here's the important part for you guys in your capacity. The dangers of these technologies as applied was presented to Health Canada in September of 2010. October of 2010, the dangers of these technologies was reported through Canadian Parliament Standing Committee on Health specific to the issue, and I presented that information at the Canadian Parliament. Following that, January of 2011, the dangers of these technologies as applied because they left out the grid covering these areas, they left out this infrastructure radiating and putting everybody in the circuit was lectured for education credits required for ongoing medical licensing. And of course that had to be qualified first. And that is now applicable in North America across the board and it changes the scope of diagnosis. We're still trying to find out why Health Canada didn't pass that information on to you. Um, and, and, and I can't explain that. That's something that they're going to have to answer to. But gentlemen, here's something important too. To watch Fortis with an untested technology, these frequencies and these meters are only going to be submitting information a couple of times a day. And this is an equivalent to 20 years on a cell phone is scientific nonsense. The grid is going to be on 24-7. The grid is going to be radiating people 24-7. These are frequencies that go through walls, go through roofs, go through a fetus, go through everything, and they are changing biological voltages. And here's an important part for you gentlemen to consider as well. This is not definable as sustainable under the Auditor General's Act. This is going to kill crops. This is going to affect salmon spawning. When we, when we ask the uh, Fortis panel and their efforts, what a high field they said they adapt and it was still complying with safety code six 
And the importance is, when you're covering 17,000 square kilometers, the BC Utilities Commission would not even get forced to answer what that meant to industry, what that meant to buildings, what that meant to municipalities. The fact that municipalities, you're going to have to close down your apartments. You are going to change the face of biology and you will change education. And to top that off, I'm sorry. Uh, one last thing, we're dealing with engineers on this. They weren't told, and that's the important part. No one was told. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, could, could you um, come to a conclusion uh, within the next minute time here? Yeah, no, the conclusion is, is that you can see this picture up here. If you scroll down a little bit, here's a picture of BC Hydro's grid, which confirms that they're radiating an entire community. So, men. If this were used in a military application, it would be an act. And you can't have administrators dismissing this. It is not insurable. You've changed the scope of medical diagnosis. It's changed the scope of anything. And you guys have been empowered with something that's just really important. But these frequencies are illegal. Lower power densities means you're under electrical load. They need to be wired. And, and I will be submitting some written uh, information. We just had a technical glitch here. So I explained to Russell, I will be submitting information for you gentlemen to look at. And again, I can't change my opinion. This is called electromagnetic induction. The peer-reviewed science is electricity. And Safety Code 6 says this. We will change the code if deemed necessary once we get peer-reviewed science. What you need to do also is you need to find out how Health Canada dismissed electricity as peer-reviewed science. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bennett. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you.